Hello friends, this is Jagdish Pug Associate. Today's topic is gate. So in today's video, I will be explaining a gate thermodynamic problem which was appeared in gate paper 2009. Okay. Before going to this video, please press the subscribe button of our channel, the mechanical engineers theme and also click the bell icon so that you will get the notifications for new videos. Okay. So let's begin friends. First, I will read the question. In an air standard auto cycle, the compression ratio is 10. The condition at the beginning of the compression process is 100 kPa and 27 degrees Celsius. Heat added at constant volume is 1500 kJ per kg, while 700 kJ per kg of heat is rejected during the other constant volume process in the cycle. Specific gas constant for air is equal to 0.287 kJ per kg Kelvin. The mean effective pressure in kilopascal of the cycle is A. 103 B. 310 C. 515 D. 1032 So this is the PV diagram and TS diagram of auto cycle. In PV diagram, process 1 to 2 is a reversible adiabatic compression process. So in this process, there will be no heat addition or heat rejection. The pressure will increase. The temperature will increase. The volume will decrease. Process 2 to 3 is a constant volume process. So in this process, heat addition will take place. Process 3 to 4 is a reversible adiabatic expansion process. So in this process, there will be no heat addition or heat rejection. The pressure will decrease. The temperature will decrease. The volume will increase. Process 4 to 1 is a constant volume process. So in this process, heat rejection will take place. Now I will analyze the question. In an air standard auto cycle, which means the working principle here is auto cycle. The compression ratio is 10, which means the compression ratio of auto cycle is 10. The condition at the beginning of the compression process is 100 kPa and 27 degrees Celsius, which means the pressure at the beginning of the compression process is 100 kPa and the temperature at the beginning of the compression process is 27 degrees Celsius. To be precise, the initial pressure value of process 1 to 2 is 100 kPa and the initial temperature value of process 1 to 2 is 27 degrees Celsius. In auto cycle, the heat addition and heat rejection takes place during constant volume process. So the heat addition value during constant volume process 2 to 3 is 1500 kJ per kg and the heat rejected value during the constant volume process 4 to 1 is 700 kJ per kg. Thus, the specific gas constant for air is 0.287 kJ per kg Kelvin. So in this question, we have to find the value of the mean effective pressure of auto cycle. Now I will list out the given conditions. The heat added during constant volume process 2 to 3 is 1500 kJ per kg and it is taken as Q1 and the heat rejected during constant volume process 4 to 1 is 800 kJ per kg and it is taken as Q2. The compression ratio is 10 and it is taken as R. The pressure at the beginning of compression process 1 to 2 is 100 kPa and it is taken as P1. The temperature at the beginning of compression process 1 to 2 is 27 degrees Celsius and it is taken as T1. Here the temperature value is in degree Celsius. So for calculation purpose we are going to represent the temperature value in Kelvin. For that just add 273 with this 27 degrees Celsius. We get 27 degrees Celsius plus, plus 273 which is 300 Kelvin. So the temperature at the beginning of compression process 1 to 2 is 300 Kelvin. The specific gas constant for air is 0.287 kJ per kg Kelvin and it is taken as R. So by using these six conditions, we are going to find the value of mean effective pressure of auto cycle. 
The formula for mean effective pressure of auto cycle is PM is equal to Q1 minus Q2 divided by V1 minus V2 where Q1 is heat addition, Q2 is heat rejection, V1 is initial volume during the process 1 to 2, V2 is final volume during the process 1 to 2. So in this formula we know the values of Q1 and Q2 but V1 and V2 are unknown. So first we will find the values of V1 and V2. Now I will move to the solving technique. V1 and V2 are the volume values of compression process 1 to 2. So in compression process 1 to 2 compression ratio is given. So by using the formulae of compression ratio we can find the values of V1 and V2. Okay. So the formulae of compression ratio is R is equal to volume at the beginning of compression process 1 to 2 divided by volume at the end of compression process 1 to 2 which is V1 by V2. Therefore R is equal to V1 by V2. We know the value of R which is 10. Therefore 10 is equal to V1 by V2. So here bring this V2 to the LHS. We get V1 is equal to 10 V2. Consider this one as equation 1. So equation 1 represents uh, V1 is 10 times of V2. Which means we have framed the equation but we have not found the values of V1 and V2. Still V1 and V2 are unknown. Okay. So first we will find the value of V2. Then we will find the value of V1. Okay. For that consider process 1 to 2. Process 1 to 2 is a reversible adiabatic compression process. So the basic formula of reversible adiabatic compression process is T2 by T1 is equal to R to the power of gamma minus 1. Where T2 is final temperature of process 1 to 2. T1 is initial temperature of process 1 to 2. R is compression ratio. Gamma is adiabatic constant which is 1.4. Okay. Now bring this T1 to the RHS. We get T2 is equal to T1 into R to the power of gamma minus 1. We know the values of T1, R and gamma. So just substitute the values. We get T2 is equal to 300 Kelvin into 10 power 1.4 minus 1. So here 1.4 minus 1 is 0.4. Therefore, T2 is equal to 300 Kelvin into 10 to the power of 0.4. Here, 10 to the power of 0.4 is 2.511. Therefore, T2 is equal to 300 Kelvin into 2.511. So, 300 Kelvin into 2.511 is 753.3 Kelvin. So, T2 is equal to 753.3 Kelvin. Consider this one as equation 2. So equation 2 is nothing but the final temperature value of process 1 to 2. We have another basic formula for reversible adiabatic compression process and the formula is P2 by P1 is equal to R to the power of gamma where P2 is final pressure value of compression process 1 to 2, P1 is initial pressure value of compression process 1 to 2, R is compression ratio and gamma is adiabatic constant. Now bring this P1 to the arches. We get P2 is equal to P1 into R to the power of gamma. We know the values of P1, R and gamma. Just substitute the values. We get P2 is equal to 100 kilopascal into 10 to the power of 1.4. Here 10 to the power of 1.4 is 25.11. So P2 is equal to 100 kilopascal into 25.11. So 100 kilopascal into 25.11 is 2511 kilopascal. So P2 is equal to 2511 kilopascal. Consider this one as equation 3. So equation 3 is nothing but the final pressure value of compression process 1 to 2. From equation 2 and equation 3 we have found out the values of T2 and P2. Now we can easily find the value of V2. Okay. For that consider process 2 to 3. 
process 2 to 3 is a constant volume process. Therefore, we can use the formulae of idle gas law, which is PV is equal to RT, where P is pressure, V is volume, R is gas constant, T is temperature. So, PV is equal to RT, consider this one as equation 4. For state 2, this equation 4 can be rewritten as P2V2 is equal to RT2. That is, apply ideal gas law on state 2. So, by applying ideal gas law on state 2, we get P2V2 is equal to RT2. Now, bring this P2 to the denominator of RHS. We get V2 is equal to RT2 divided by P2. Consider this one as equation 5. Now, substitute equation 2 and equation 3 in equation 5. Equation 2 is T2 value and equation 3 is P2 value. So, substitute T2 and P2 in equation 5. We get and uh, R is gas constant value which is known. Okay. So, just substitute T2 and P2 value in equation 5. We get V2 is equal to 0.287 kilojoules per kg Kelvin into 753.3 Kelvin divided by 2511 kilopascal. So, in this RHS, I am going to split the numerical terms and SA units. Therefore, V2 is equal to 0.287 into 753.3 divided by 2511 into kilojoules per kg Kelvin into Kelvin divided by kilopascal. Here, 0.287 into 753.3 divided by 2511 is 0.0861. And here, kg Kelvin will move to the denominator. Therefore, V2 is equal to 0.0861 into kilojoules into Kelvin divided by kg into Kelvin into kilopascal. Here, Kelvin Kelvin get cancelled. Therefore, V2 is equal to 0.0861 into kilojoules divided by kg into kilopascal. Here, kilojoule is 10 power 3 newton meter and kilopascal is 10 power 3 newton per meter square. Therefore, V2 is equal to 0.0861 into 10 power 3 newton meter divided by kg into 10 power 3 newton per meter square. Here, 10 power 3, 10 power 3 gets cancelled and this meter square will move to the numerator. Therefore, V2 is equal to 0.0861 into Newton meter into meter square divided by kg into Newton. Here, Newton Newton gets cancelled and meter into meter square is meter cube. Therefore, V2 is equal to 0.0861 meter cube per kg. Consider this one as equation 6. So, equation 6 is nothing but V2 value, which is final volume value of compression process 1 to 2. So, now we will find the value of V1. Okay. For that, substitute this equation 6 in equation 1. Equation 1 is nothing but V1 is equal to 10 times V2. Okay. Therefore, V1 is equal to 10 into 0.0861 meter cube per kg. So, 10 into 0.0861 meter cube per kg is 0.861 meter cube per kg. Therefore, V1 is equal to 0.861 meter cube per kg. Consider this one as equation 7. So, equation 7 is nothing but initial volume value of compression process 1 to 2. So, from equation 6 and equation 7, we have found out the values of V1 and V2. So, now we can easily find the value of mean effective pressure because the two unknown terms are known now. So, now we will find the value of mean effective pressure of autocycle. We know the formula is Pm is equal to Q1 minus Q2 divided by V1 minus V2. So, in this formula, Q1, Q2, V1 and V2 are known. So, consider this formula as equation 8. Now, substitute equation 6 and equation 7 in equation 8. Equation 6 and equation 7 are nothing but the volume values, which is V2 and V1. So, just substitute the V2 and V1 in equation 8. We get Pm is equal to 1500 kilojoules per kg minus 700 kilojoules per kg divided by 0 0.861, 0 0.861 meter cube per kg minus 0 0.0861 meter cube per kg. 
So in this RHS, I am going to split the numerical terms and S units. Therefore, PM is equal to 1500 divided, I am sorry, 1500 minus 700 divided by 0.861 minus 0.0861 into kilojoules per kg divided by meter cube per kg. Here, 1500 minus 700 is 800 and 0.861 minus 0.0861 is 0.7749 and kilojoule per kg divided by meter cube per kg is kilojoule into kg divided by meter cube into kg okay so pm is equal to 800 divided by 0.7749 into kilojoule into kg divided by meter cube into kg here 800 divided by 0.7749 is 1032.39 and here kg kg gets cancelled Therefore, PM is equal to 1032.39 kilojoule per meter cube. Here, kilojoule is 10 power 3 newton meter. Therefore, PM is equal to 1032.39 10 power 3 newton meter divided by meter cube. So, here meter divided by meter cube is uh, 1 by meter square. Therefore, um, PM is equal to 1032.39 into 10 power 3 newton per meter square. So, 10 power 3 newton per meter square is nothing but kilopascal. So, PM is equal to 1032.39 kilopascal, which is approximately equal to 1032 kilopascal. So, the mean effective pressure value of auto cycle is 1032 kilopascal. So, the conclusion is D is the right answer. Because you can see here, among these four options, D holds the value of 1032. So the mean effective pressure of auto cycle is 1032. And the answer is D. Okay. So friends, this is the method to solve this problem. I hope you all would have understood. If any doubts are there, please do comment in comment box. And remember to like, share and comment on our videos. Thank you friends.